Everything is literally connected. And here's why. A principle known as quantum entanglement. It's a mind-bending phenomenon where particles become interconnected. So, what is quantum entanglement? Why did Einstein say that this concept is like spooky action at a distance? Why does this concept challenge our classical understanding of reality? What is the superposition state, and why is it very complex to understand? How is quantum entanglement useful for us? Join us in today's video to understand these questions and find out many more intriguing facts. The concept. Imagine you are on a long drive and your stomach suddenly starts grumbling. You decide to stop at a fast food place and order a hot dog and a hamburger. They put them into similar boxes and hand them over to you through the window. Now, you have no way of knowing which one has a hamburger and which has the hot dog. Obviously, if you open one box and see a hot dog, you immediately know the other has a hamburger. This means the hamburger and the hot dog are entangled in a certain way. This is roughly the idea on which quantum entanglement is based. Look around you. Everything you see or interact with in the real world follows the rules of classical mechanics. This is a motion of the body, a study on which general principles first laid down by Sir Isaac Newton. But what about the objects that are really, really small? Does it follow the same law of classical mechanics? Well, no. When things are small, Quantum mechanics takes over and things start to get extremely weird. It consists of small particles, like particles which consist of light and the particles inside atoms such as protons, neutrons, and electrons. To give you a rough idea of the size of these particles, think about this. The tip of the needle contains billions of electrons. That's how incredibly small these particles are. Now, you have a general idea on electrons. Let's start about identities. If someone asks, who are you? What do you say? Probably your name, right? Now assume if an alien species from another planet asked the same question then. You would say my name is XYZ, and I am human from Earth. In this case, you identify three levels of identification. Similarly, in a 3D space, X, Y, and Z coordinates specify the object's exact location. No two objects will ever have the same X, Y, and Z coordinates. If you consider the 4D space with adding T equals time as the fourth coordinate, even then, no two objects will have the same coordinates. In the same way, electrons have four levels of identifications, four quantum numbers, Every electron inside the atoms has unique four quantum coordinates. No two electrons share the same combination. These four quantum numbers are called Number one, principal quantum number, n. Number two, orbital angular momentum, quantum number one. Three, magnetic quantum number, mi. Four, electron spin quantum number, ms. All these quantum numbers are very important. These will tell us the position of electrons in every atom. But for the sake of this video, we're going to concentrate to only electron spin quantum number, ms. An electron will have either positive upward spin, called spin up, or negative downward spin, called spin down. Now this is where it gets more complex. When we say the electron is positive, it doesn't mean the electron is actually spinning. Although it does have an angular momentum and a proper magnetic orientation, it's not exactly spinning. It may actually be in a state of superposition, where it can have negative or positive spin. So what is the superposition state? This may be difficult to understand. Here is the example for the understanding. You might have heard of Schrodinger's cat, as per this experiment, you put a cat in a soundproof box with a small radioactive material, a poison, and a Geiger counter. If the radioactive substance decays, 
then the Geiger counter triggers a setup that releases the poison, thus killing the cat. However, the decay of the radioactive substance is a random process, so there's no way to predict when it will happen. And that's why before opening a box, you can say that the cat is in a superposition of dead or alive at the same time. Similarly, electrons at their natural state exist as a superposition that can do up or down spin, only when measured. It will give its value up or down. In tactical terms, this refers to collapse of the wave function. In quantum mechanics, wave function collapse occurs when a wave function, which was initially in a superposition of a few states, reduces to a single state due to interaction with the external world. When a pair of electrons is generated, interacted, or shared special proximity, their spin state can get entangled, which is what scientists called quantum entanglement of electrons. Once the electrons are entangled, they both can only have opposite spins. That is, if one measures to have upspin, the second one will automatically get downspin. So we know that both the electrons unmeasured do not have the same spin, but a superposition of up and a downspin. Now, here is the intriguing fact. If we put one electron here on Earth and another somewhere very far, let's say in the Andromeda galaxy, and if we measure the electron here on Earth, we can get the measurement of its entangled electron in Andromeda galaxy. This information traveled immediately, even faster than the speed of light. This concept was difficult to digest, even for scientists, when it was discovered. Einstein even called out this concept as spooky action at a distance. But the big question is, how is this quantum entanglement useful to us? Well, let's start with the most common object, the clock. Having a common synchronized clock is very important in today's world. They keep things in line, like the stock markets or GPS systems. Today we have extremely precise clocks known as atomic clocks. An entangled atomic clock system would be not preoccupied with local differences, effectively bringing clocks together as a single pendulum. This means adding a hundred times more atoms in an entangled clock would make it a hundred times more precise. This theory has been vastly used in our GPS technology. Then we have something called quantum cryptography. As a kid, you might have built a secret code that only you and your best friend could understand. Imagine that, but with the key to cracking the code being randomly polarized photons entangled with each other. That is quantum cryptography. Today, many tech companies are using quantum key distribution techniques to design ultra-secure networks. Even some of our messages on social media platforms are encrypted. All of this is possible with the help of quantum entanglement. But then, how about quantum teleportation? Is it possible? Well, yes. It is possible in the world of subatomic particles. But it's very different from what is usually being portrayed in movies. It's actually the teleportation of information, but not the matter. Conclusion Scientists are still researching to fully understand quantum entanglement. Once we gain this knowledge, we could potentially revolutionize every aspect of our existence. Hopefully this video provided a simple explanation about the concept of quantum entanglement. Let us know which of the fact or information intrigues you the most. Thanks for watching.